How's it going everybody? Ryrad here today and we are back with our Honolulu Hammerheads franchise mode and before we get into this series, the Western Conference Finals against the Los Angeles Kings, I want to let you guys know I now have a Discord channel. You guys can go ahead and check it out it down in the description. Go ahead and join it. We're getting more people in there. It's great. I love the interaction. I'm having lots of fun. Some voice channels too. If, we, uh, if we're there at the same time, we can chat and you guys can uh, you know get to know me a little bit better and get some previews on upcoming series. I have a new one coming up next week that I'm very excited to show you guys and I think you guys will love it. Um, but without further ado, enough of the channel plugging. Let's go ahead and check out how we've gotten to where we are. So we beat the uh, Arizona Coyotes in five games, winning the first two, losing the third, and then winning the next two. Uh, but before that, we went to game seven against the Anaheim Ducks. They beat us in overtime twice. I mean, all the first three games were overtime games. Heck, the whole series was decided by one goal. Um, so two overtime losses and then a regulation loss put us down 3-1. But then we bounced back with three straight 2-1 victories. So now we will be taking on the Los Angeles Kings, who just eliminated the Dallas Stars. Now, if we want to go ahead and check out what they'll be throwing up against us, and we can see just how we stack up. So if we go to the Los Angeles Kings and view their lines, Lonze Kopitar, Ilya Kovalchuk, and Adrian Kempe. Kemp? Kempe? I don't know. Anyway... Kovalchuk not traded yet because of when we started this. Still just sick. He's super slow and not the best defender. So how are they doing? He's not got a ton of goals. Uh, but they are, they are a plus up there. He's got 11 points, 10 points, 9 points. So Kovalchuk is leading the way for that first line. Then on the second line, they have Franz Nielsen, Moises Watt, uh, and Dustin Brown. Moises Watt was drafted fifth overall the year we took Jerome, uh, Joel Aginla. Um... God, they had to make him a J again. I always forget his name. I'm just going to call him Aginla. The year we took Aginla, Moses, Moises, Watt, Mo Moises Watt went fifth. Ooh, okay. And how's he doing? He's got seven goals, three assists. He is a playmaker who's got really sick playmaking puck skills, but not a good shot. But hey, he's scoring. Franz Nielsen and Dustin Brown are feeding him. Um, then they've got Adam Ernie, Alex Iafalo, and Trevor Lewis. Uh, the, this line, I mean Trevor, uh, I, I follow, excuse me, is the one who's making the difference. The other two guys haven't really played a ton, so it would make sense. Uh, and then finally, they got Matt Martin, Jared Anderson Dolan, and Jeff Carter. So Jeff Carter's down there on that fourth line. Maybe they shuffled the lines a bit uh, and moved Ernie up or something like that just because of the ice time look. Or maybe he's on a special team. Uh, but overall, I'm not too intimidated by these lines. Now if we go take a look at the defense... 93 overall, Drew Doughty. Uh, that is scary. Uh, Drew Doughty is just super fantastic. Um, 93 overall is probably one of the best defenders in the game, if not the best. Uh, but they also have Alec Martinez, Jay Bomeister, and, Gon and Gustavs Gonchar, who was taken in fourth overall uh, in, the, in the draft last season. Not this past season, but the season before. Um, no, it was no, it was this season. Yeah, no, that's we just came out of the 2020 draft because we're in 2021 in the playoffs. So yeah, it was the 2020 draft. And then wow, they got a really bad third pairing. To, how is Jonathan Quick turning back the clock, or did they get somebody? Uh, Keith Kincaid apparently. Um, okay, no, it is Jonathan Quick. I was gonna say Keith Kincaid is their starter. Are they starting him? He's got one win and he made 34 saves on 35 shots. Very good for him, and a good a good uh, statistics there from Jonathan Quick too. So interesting to see what's going on here. There, there's not a ton of like top talent that you know I would be afraid of, but I would say um, I would say that um, this this team is not too uh, intimidating to play against. I think I think we have a really good chance now. I'll go ahead and show you guys what lines we will be using. <clears throat> And these are our lines. Now, I think we have a much better team overall. I don't know. It's close. It'll be close. But uh, we've got Joel Aginla, Braden Point, and Brock Besser. Braden Point has been great for us. One goal, 12 assists. Uh, just, uh, just, he's just doing, putting up numbers for us. Then we got Hoffman, Stahl, and Chris Kreider. I believe Chris Kreider has just been really solid for us on that line. He's been a nice uh, addition to that line. The plus three certainly helps. So it's like 89, 89, 86 which is a really, really solid second line. Lawson Kraus, Anthony Sorelli, and Kasperi Kapanen um, have had them good. I mean, 
Really, it's been Kapanen driving that line, but I'm fine with that. And then finally, we've got DiGiuseppe, Chandler Stevenson, and Zach Aston Reese. Um, so, they're not really a, a very high powered bottom six, but these guys, we tried to fix the penalty kill uh, all season, I believe. Uh, yeah, we still have Ryder and Ferk scratched. So, next we'll go to the blue line. We've got Rasmus Dahlin and Brandon Montour. Th these two, these two, like, Dahlin has just been great. He's playing 27 minutes a night. I think he was up near 30, but that's because we played three straight overtime games in the first series. Uh, the second pairing is good as well. Justin Schultz and Gustafsson. I mean, nobody's putting up crazy amount of points or anything like that. Hayden Fleury and Colin Miller, maybe the one weak spot. They're both an 85 with the overall boost. Uh, and then in goal... We made the acquisition of Pecorine because Eric Comrie was not getting it done. And Grice was actually playing solid uh, as the backup for the season. So we went out and acquired Pecorine because he was just a solid starter. And, you know, he's playing uh, just as good as I could have hoped. Eight wins in 12 games, 928, and a 2-1-8. No shutouts yet. But, hey, he doesn't have to get a shutout as long as he gets the wins. So those are the lines. I think we have the advantage here. I think our goaltending is better. I think our blue line is much better. Um, and I think our forward cores are just about on par, maybe an edge to us with some higher powered second liners. Dustin Brown is not on our second line. It's Chris Kreider and Hoffman are the wingers. So let's see how that plays out. A 39, 31 and 12 team, a team that didn't even hit 40 wins on the season is now in the Western conference finals. LA is going to shithouse their way to the Stanley cup finals, aren't they? But let's go ahead and see if we can stop them here in game. Number one, we get an early power play first period. Unfortunately, cannot capitalize. 12 to 9 in shots, 0 0 at the end of 1. After 2, it is still 0 0. Both goaltenders playing well with both teams in the 20s. Us with 23 shots, LA with 20 shots even. So, as we start this third period, the first goal is going to be huge, and Eric Stahl beats Keith Kincaid on the power play, who, but might I add, Keith Kincaid has been playing quite well. Uh, he made 34 saves on 35 shots in his first start. Um, and now it looks like he's going to make a ton of saves here in this one with five minutes left. Brock Besser makes, oh, gets us that insurance marker. That's huge. And with one minute to go, that's all she wrote. A really good game from Pecorine and 2-0 is the final score with 35 shots for your Honolulu Hammerheads. Um, it's a really good way to get this series started. Kind of the series I for, foresaw. <laughs> It's really, it's really pretty even besides the defense. I think we should be scoring more than we are, but it's not like we have a super high-powered team yet. We're really close. I think one more season and we'll be uh, uh, on paper and overall just machine. Uh, but here in game number two, paper doesn't matter. What matters is out on the ice. And after one period, neither team can get any goals. LA does take the lead in shots, nine to six though. After two periods, we've gone ahead and Lawson Krause on that third line has beaten Keith Kincaid, and we brought the shots right back to even. So now as we start this third period, 1-0, we get another opportunity on the power play. Power play can't get it done, can't get us that insurance marker, and that's going to come back to bite us as Adam Ernie equalizes for the LA Kings. But now we can get that uh, insurance marker, actually the game leading goal. We've taken the lead with Kasperi Kapanen on the power play at 10-30. Now, with 3.17 left in the game, can Rene keep that door closed? 30 seconds, Colin Miller is going to help out his plus-minus. Um... Uh, does, does empty netters help your plus minus? I don't know. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Another two goal victory for us and a 3-1 win. So Pecorine, I said didn't even have a shutout. I forgot to acknowledge him. He got a shutout in the last one. So good for that man. Uh, I was telling him he didn't need shutouts, just wins. And he went ahead and did both. He got two wins and a shutout in our first two games at home. But now we travel east to the west coast of the United States. <laughs> and um, we're going to take on LA at the Staples Center. Hopefully we can keep this momentum rolling. It's been a very low-scoring series. Only six total goals in the series so far. Will that change here in game number three now that we've gotten to the mainland, the United States? First period. Still same old, same old. 12 to 11 in shots. So the game, the series are, are close. The games are close. The score is indicative of that. I just think we've got that quality, that scoring talent that LA doesn't really have. Second period. And there it is on display. Braden Point, our top line. Our top line is better than theirs. Our, I just think there's just more talent on our team. Uh, 20 to 22 in shots. So LA with, uh, is out shooting us, but Braden Point breaks the deadlock with 11 seconds to go before the intermission. That is a ball buster. Will LA come out demoralized or will they come out with even more energy here in this third period in front of their hometown crowd? About halfway through the period has gone. Uh, and it's still one nothing. us. LA gets a power play. We kill it off, though. The penalty kill does its job. And Mark, 
or Mike Hoffman right in front of the net, right in the crease. Aginla then gets himself another goal with a minute to go, and it's a 3-0 shutout victory. And we are one win away from the Stanley Cup Finals. Braden Point has not scored, but the dude just dishes the puck. Apparently in the playoffs, Braden Point will dish the puck left and right. And that's good, because I want Joel Aginla to just really grow and do well. Same thing with Brock Besser. Brock Besser, hit or miss, but you know... These are solid scores. There's nothing crazy about these scores. It's not 7-4 to four or anything like that like I have seen in the past. Um, all of our series have been pretty close. The the, the scores-wise. Scoring-wise, it's been awfully close. That uh, Ducks series was close I and low scoring. I can't remember the uh, Arizona series. But so far in this one, first period, we're going to break it open early finally. And we go ahead and get ourselves two goals on nine shots. Uh, Lawson Krause and Sorelli. So that third line, the depth of our team is coming in clutch here. Period number two, though, sees that continue. And, uh, Sorelli gets himself another goal. But Adam Ernie does pull one back and gives LA some hope to stave off elimination here on home ice. Shots are in favor of LA, so they are taking the play to us, but it doesn't matter. Chris Kreider gets our three-goal advantage back, and it's 4-1 to one now. Halfway through the period, it looks like we'll be t coasting to the Stanley Cup Finals. We, LA has got a power play that comes and goes. Five minutes to go here. Three minutes, two minutes. Brandon Montour on the top pairing gets us f a fifth goal, and then Cullen Miller gets us another goal. Cullen Miller bounces back. That third defensive pairing for the LA Kings was pretty bad, so I'd assume when they're matched up against one another that our defensive pairing will obviously just destroy theirs. And... It's indicative. Colin Miller gets himself a couple goals in this series. Brandon Montour gets a goal. We win 6-1 here in this final. And just as I said that there was not a ton of scoring here in this series, we go ahead and blow things open with a 7-goal game 4, making it 6-1 us and making us the representative for your Western Conference in the Stanley Cup Finals. That was a really easy series. I'm just, you know, I never really felt worried about the Kings there as we swept our way to uh, the Stanley Cup Finals. Boston looks like they're up 3-1 and looks like they're going to be the team we will be taking on, which scares me because Boston is really good. Or are they starting to decline? That is the question. Here's the game for Boston right here on the 18th. Will it end? It is over, and that means it's the Boston Bruins against the Honolulu Hammerheads. Well, guys, that's all the time I have for this one. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more, and I will see you guys in the Stanley Cup Finals.